So it appears France has emerged as Israel's biggest supporter, not the U.S. Well, French President Francois Hollande was given red carpet treatment when he arrived in Tel Aviv yesterday for a three-day visit to Israel. Netanyahu heaped praise on France, saying, Your support and your friendship is real. It's sincere. You are one out of six. Israel sees in France a true friend. Viva la France. Well, in this, is this another sign of the United States' diminishing sphere of influence in the region? If so, will this further hamper the administration's ability to navigate other pressing foreign policy and security issues in the Middle East? Joining us tonight is Jonathan Schanzer, Vice President for Research for the Foundation of Demo Defense of Democracies and the author of the book, State of Failure. Welcome. Thank you very much. So, Jonathan, I have a question for you. Lindsey Graham made it clear last month that he's concerned that this is not a good deal, that this is ne we've never seen anything like this with Israel in the Middle East and the United States, and he's worried that this may become another situation like North Korea. Do you agree? Well, absolutely, I, I agree. I mean, when you look at, at the countries out there that have been developing uh, or have already developed nuclear capacity, you could either put them in, uh, let's say, the bucket with, let's say, France or Holland uh, or Mexico or Japan, or you could put them in the bucket with Pakistan or North Korea. I think when you look at Iran's record, uh, it is a state sponsor of terrorism. Uh, it, this is a radical regime that has been involved in sponsoring terrorist groups and fomenting unrest around the world. I think they fall in that latter bucket, and the concern here is that, uh, that this would become another North Korea scenario. What does this say to you, though, that France is the one that seems to be coming in and supporting Israel this way, more so than the United States? We're supposed to be their strongest ally in the region, vice versa. Is this, what does this say about the French-Israeli relationship? Is this something new? Because it seems to me that France hasn't exactly been cozying up to Israel in the past. Right. Well, let me first say this, that, uh, that I think that U.S. policy in general, I've been calling uh, President Obama's uh, foreign policy the bizarro doctrine. Right now we're in a position where longtime friends like Israel and Saudi Arabia and Turkey are furious with the United States and enemies, traditional enemies of the United States uh, like uh, Iran and like Syria have become increasingly satisfied with our new foreign policy direction. And so the fact that you've got the French coming out now, this is the icing on the cake. The French have long been seen as sort of this very ambivalent part in the West uh, on, on issues of defense, and now here they are coming out as strong as they have been. It's rather remarkable. Let me just say this, though, that I don't think the French are entirely in Israel's corner. Uh, uh, President Hollande, after visiting uh, with Israel, went over to the Palestinian territories and condemned Israeli settlement building. So this is not as if things have changed all, all, all of a sudden and that the French are entirely in Israel's corner. It's just a sense right now that the French understand that this is a bad deal for international security, not mm -hmm. because there's a strong French-Israeli alliance, but because France wants to preserve the current world order, and they're afraid that the United States is letting go. I think that's an important distinction to make, and I'm glad you made it, because I know that the French have been more sympathetic to the Palestinians in the past, so this new alliance seemed rather curious to me, and uh, so I'm glad you made that distinction. Speaking of, historical, <laughs> speaking of historical context, let me ask you this, Jonathan. You've been watching this relationship between the United States and Israel for quite some time. I read today that uh, we had difficulties with our relationship with Israel in the late 1980s, with President Reagan, uh, with President Bush at that time, over settlements in, uh, in Israel. So... But quantify this, the, the, the relationship for me right now. The, the, uh, the relationship we have with Israel, the strained relationship, how, is, how would you put it historically? Are we at a historical low point? Yeah, I would say that right now uh, we're certainly at a low point. I mean, when you look at the times where there have been tension, for example, uh, there was some mistrust with Jimmy Carter, but at the end of the day what he was able to do was to broker a peace agreement with Egypt. Uh, some of the, the, the tensions with the Reagan administration were about providing the Saudis uh, with high-tech weaponry, uh, and certainly there was some concern with the Bush, uh, second, or the first Bush administration, rather, uh, over this issue of settlements. What the Israelis are so concerned about right now is that, you know, the United States is basically asking them uh, to trust uh, you know, just uh, it's, it's a question of trust with an existential threat. And when we, when the Israelis have looked at, for example, the way that the United States botched Syria or they botched mm -hmm. Egypt, now they're coming and they're saying, trust us, we have this, don't worry about it. But then, of course, if we're wrong, if we're wrong here, and the administration allows Iran to go nuclear, this is devastating for Israel. And so they're really not in a position where they want to trust the administration. This is a very, very low point. We just and I, it. Jonathan, really quick, we always ask everyone on this set, subject, what do you think Israel is going to do? Given our dim clear diminished influence in the area, in that region, do you think that Israel is going to be forced to go at it alone? We're going to well, add listen, you to I the bets. 
Yeah, well, I, I think eventually they will, but I think that what they're going to do is at least try to give this thing a shot. If a deal is made, the Israelis will watch, and as soon as they begin to see uh, the Iranians cheat in any way, I think that's when you see them uh, move. So if it's in 180 days, watch what Israel does on day 181, right? Exactly. Jonathan, thank you so much. Thank you.